Let's talk about another feature of Amazon S3 which is called bucket versioning. Now this feature can be very useful if you want to retain multiple copies of an object and every copy would be treated as a new version. So bucket versioning is a feature which is enabled on a bucket level. It allows you to keep multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. There is no limit of how many number of versions you want to keep. Yes, versions can be controlled through the lifecycle policy. So you can set configuration that after a specific point in time, you do not need that many version and it has to be deleted or it has to be moved to another storage class of S3. So those features would be there. This is a bucket level setting. So let me go ahead and enable this setting on a bucket and then we will see that how it reflects into console. So this is my bucket and here I would go to its properties and I would enable the versioning feature. Edit that very simple. You can enable and suspend. These are the only two option. I am enabling it. I would say save changes. Now my bucket would maintain multiple copies of the version, multiple copies of the object. So here is my object. If you remember, we have this object called object one dot txt. Now I do not have public access enabled on this bucket. So if I would access it from this URL, obviously it won't allow me to access the object. But I have another way to check into this object or see the content of that is by clicking this open button. When I click this open button, it would open that object with the credential of my user here. Currently it is using the public URL, which is obviously not accessible. But once I go ahead and click on this open button, it would give me the content of my object. This is my object. And if you see here, there is a additional token added at the prefix of my URL. So it is basically telling AWS that, hey, this request has to be fulfilled with the credential of the current logged in user. So there is a difference between clicking on this object URL directly and clicking on the open button. So idea is I wanted to show you that our object is available. This is my object and this is a local file. As I said before, I can't edit the object directly into S3, but I could see versions here. So this is my current version null. This was created on last modified February 3rd. These are the details associated. Now let's go ahead manually create a version of the file and then we would upload it into the same bucket. So I'm opening my object.txt file and then I'm saying this one is my version 2. I would save this file and then I would upload that file again into the same bucket. One object already exists with the same name and I'm adding another object again here. Same 21 byte, same destination. I haven't changed any permission or anything and I just say upload here. So upload finished. Let's see what happened now. Is S3 maintaining multiple versions of my object? So I'll go to my object here, object onetxt and if I go to its versions, tab, I would find two object version here. One is at February 3rd, 2013, 06. Another is February 3rd, 2237. There's a difference between them. Now, what is happening behind the scene that once I enable the versioning, my bucket had this object. When I was accessing it through a standard X standard URL that was pointing to my version one of the object. But as soon as I have put version two of the object into the bucket, now this URL will start pointing to the latest version of my object. If I push version three inside the bucket, it will then keep version one, one, version two, and my URL would start pointing to this. So this automatically points to the latest version. So if somebody is trying to access just directly this, they would automatically get the latest version. Now you may have a question, hey, what about the older version of my object if I want to access it? Yes, you can. What happens here that 
system or it, Amazon S3 automatically generates a version ID associated with that version. So as you could see here, I have the same URL, but then I am giving additional parameter and saying I want to access a specific version and you can get this version ID from S3 service like here. If you see, this is the version ID of that particular object which we have. Now a question to you and think over it and let me and maybe just note down locally. Obviously you can't communicate real time to me. Now let's consider this. This is an object in my S3 bucket that was 10 GB. I had to modify something in that 10 GB. Obviously I do not have an edit command into Amazon S3 bucket so I can't directly modify it. I maybe downloaded it locally on my laptop modified it with additional 1 GB of content and then uploaded it back to S3. So there is a version 1 which was 10 GB. This bucket was a version enabled bucket, versioning enabled bucket. So we have version 1 which is of 10 GB. We would now have version 2 which will be stored here. This is my version 2 and that would be 11 GB because we just made one GB chain. My question to you is that would I be charged for, let me write down here, would I be charged for option A, which says I would be charged for 10 plus one GB because only the increment or option B, I would be charged for 10 plus 11 GB. Think about it and note down locally and I'll reveal you answer in a minute. For you and me, this looks like an object which has just an increment of 1 GB. But for S3, it is treated as it is treated as an independent object. Yes, it is maintaining a link here, but this is consuming the whole 11 GB of space. Previous one had 10 GB. Now we have one more object which is of 11 GB. So total I would be paying to Amazon S3 will be 21 GB storage capacity. So versions are not incrementally maintained. They are an independent copy. So as many versions you would keep, you would pay money for that. So be little conscious of how many versions you have to keep, how long you have to keep. And you can obviously use replication, sorry, our lifecycle policy to configure when to remove older version after a specific criteria has been fulfilled. So every version is independent. Every version can be accessed by a version ID and you would be able to keep as many versions as you want. Now, when you delete things in a version enabled bucket, it is treated little differently. Let me show that too also. So let's say I am done with it. Now, if I want to access this particular version of that object, can I? I can, yes. I can click on open here and I would have version 2 also visible to me and I have version 1 also visible to me. So both would be maintained. There shouldn't be a problem. Obviously the token which I have generated that time has expired and that's why we are getting a request as expired kind of option. But we have both the versions available. Let me show that also here. I will open it and I have first version and here I have version 2 of the object. So it would maintain multiple versions, and you can keep as many as you want. Now, when you delete something, it works little differently for version enable bucket. By default, versions are not displayed here. So you have to click on this radio button, which is called show versions. And now I would start seeing that on the object 1.txt has a version associated with it. Let's say I just remove that box sorry that radio button again to normal and then I go ahead and say hey object 1.txt I no longer need you let me delete it done when I'm saying delete this is what is happening if you look here it is asking me for confirmation and now it is saying please confirm deletion type delete into text input so I am going to delete this object let's see what happens so if I am now going to look into the bucket just to do a standard list operation what you are displaying here is the list operation on s3 display the content i won't find my uh, 
object to file here i could not get anything on object related information there is nothing like object here but if i click on show version and refresh it let's go ahead and check it again i am trying to see this object one maybe i have to check again like this i say object i don't find it i say show version and now i see object here what s3 did s3 just has put a delete marker on top of my object instead of actually deleting it so it is hiding my object from being displayed in a standard way but as soon as i say show version what is happening now that my object is visible to me previously we had the previous version latest version and then now we have one more pointer on top which is called my delete marker and this delete marker is hiding that object from being listed but physically it is still consuming space into my bucket and i am still liable to pay for it so in case you are deleting from a version enabled bucket and you want to completely get rid of the object what you should be doing you should be deleting all of the chain of that object to clear everything otherwise it is still sitting there is still sitting there so i can go ahead and select this 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 and then i can say hey i want to delete it or if i prefer to only delete one of the older versions i could still delete it and now see the information here now it says do you want to permanently delete the object and the answer is yes now i am permanently deleting that version of the object and now i have got rid of that if i further go and check now the delete pointer still exist and this object exist also if i want to completely remove everything i could select here and could say delete and now all of it is going to be deleted no longer i am being charged for the object that's how the deleting of a version enabled object works so hopefully this thing is clear let's talk about some more additional features of amazon s3 one of them is called replication so replication can be very useful if you want to keep multiple copies of your data and that's where rules exist which you can configure and you should have a data being copied so i could take data from one bucket and copy it to another bucket these rules are doing what they are enabling automatic asynchronous copying of object across amazon s3 bucket this is a keyword here most of you probably know about that but still let no harm in repeating it there is two ways of replication one is synchronous replication and another is called asynchronous replication they are just referred as sync and async sync is a real time replication so if you are copying something in a synchronous way it means that as soon as you commit something here that should be visible on the destination also at the same time there should not be a delay that is synchronous replication but when we are talking about a asynchronous replication replication would still happen but there would be little lag from source to destination you created something here it is let's say in case of s3 it is an object it may take little time and after some delay it would be then copied to the destination bucket so it may take little time to appear into the destination and that is called a asynchronous replication so whenever we are enabling replication here this replication is a asynchronous replication and to use this particular feature we would need a version enabled bucket if a versioning is not enabled it won't allow you to configure this replication rule what we can also do sorry 
you can replicate data from one source bucket to multiple destination bucket one to many is possible you could do that maybe you want to keep multiple copies of your data for different purposes maybe i want to capture data into production account and move the same data into qa or i want to move it to another location for disaster recovery in case something goes wrong or i am just looking to keep more copies of my data to avoid any manual or or automated deletion problem so you can replicate data from one source bucket to multiple destination bucket this replication also support cross account and cross region and you will also find that lot of people do cross account cross region replication for better safety of it so why let's say this was one account you had created a s3 bucket here you created another copy of that through replication into the same aws account if this account gets compromised your source and destination both are at risk but if my destination was somewhere into a different account then even if one of my account gets compromised my data is still safe into another account and i can recover it from there so that is a but much better approach to do replication into a different account if you can and if your legal policies allow it should, that should be done and if you want to create a way of getting data even if a region is down then better to do a cross region replication obviously there would be charges associated with replication and you would be treating you would be paying for that destination bucket storage transfer and all the stuff but it is a good way to keep multiple copies of your data so let's go ahead and create this replication setting into our console so i'll go back to my bucket and it is a, a replication is a bucket level setting but you could be selective on which specific objects you want to copy let's go ahead to management and in management i would configure a replication rule you could create multiple replication rule shouldn't be a problem i am creating one rule as of now my requirement is this bucket exist into northern virginia i want to create one more bucket into london and then copy data from here to there right so let's create a name for this rule let's call it replicate data to london i am keeping it enabled because sometimes you may create a rule and later enable it that is up to you source bucket is this one which i selected which exist into us is northern virginia i could limit the scope of this rule to using one or more filter filter could be prefix filter could be tags and i could say only replicate those specific information but right now i am keeping it apply to all object the next would be destination my destination can be a bucket in this account i could specify a bucket in another account also so you could provide their account id provide the bucket name and then you would be able to replicate there obviously the destination account has to give you permission then only you would be able to replicate to their account it's not like i can replicate to anyone's account there would be permission required we will see that in a minute and now i am keeping it here choose a bucket in my account i do not have many bucket i have only one bucket there is no point to replicate within the same location so maybe i should go back and create one more bucket and we'll see how it looks once we create the replication rule so i'm going back to s3 management console on a different tab and i would create one more bucket here as you see this is called let's say replicated data and this one is on 03 02 2023 this is not in northern virginia i want to keep it into let's say london region done i have configured all the setting which is required and i would just say now create bucket so my bucket is created obviously there is no content in that so let me go back to replicated data and see if there are any object obviously there is nothing and now i go back and hopefully my replication setting would have picked up the region let me go ahead and browse refresh this and now my second bucket is displayed which is into eu west to london i have selected it done 
Replication require versioning to be enabled. Our source bucket already had a versioning. Destination bucket doesn't have it. So we can enable it from here. So done. That is also done. Now, when I'm copying data from one bucket to another bucket, obviously we need permission. Permission here is provided by a mechanism called IAM role. IAM stand for identity and access management. My bad identity and access management. We will discuss this topic in detail for now. Just understand that this is the way of giving permission for specific work. So we want to give permission and for that I would be creating a role. So my role doesn't exist here. I can create a new role and once I have selected that I should be good to move forward. This role would configure all the required permission to copy data, read data from source and then write data into destination. Even I could go ahead and say, hey, I want to change the storage class. In primary location, the data is into S3 standard, but I am keeping it into backup in for backup into second location. What is the point to keep it into standard? Even I could change the destination storage class shouldn't be an issue. Some additional setting related to replication. If you want to have a very specific control and want to copy data within 15 minutes without any issues, then you can enable this feature. Some metrics and notifications. So you would be getting that detail to monitor how your replication is working, how my data got replicated so that metrics and notification can be sent your delete marker which we just saw with version enable bucket they can be also be replicated and replica modification sync so replicate metadata changes made to replica in the bucket to the destination bucket so metadata changes will also be replicated or will be kept in sync so this is what we are doing replication is a one way method what I am configuring here, North Virginia to send data to London, but not the other way around. If I want the other way around, I have to create another rule in London bucket to send data to Northern Virginia. And once my rule is ready, I would just click on save and rule is effective immediately. Right now. What it identified that my bucket already have objects. Okay, so. It is asking me that do you want to replicate existing objects also? If not, you can say, hey, I do not want to replicate. I want this rule to be applied to any newer objects which are getting created, not to the existing one. So I could do that. But right now I would say, no, I do not want to replicate existing object. That's fine. I could just click on submit. And now my rule is ready here, as you could see. And there are ways to set up priorities. If you have multiple rule, you could set up that. I'm not making a lot of changes here, but you could go ahead and configure settings. So your replication rule would be ready. And as soon as now you have data into your learning AWS bucket here, you would be able to get the data replicated to destination bucket. Let's add that object.txt again. And now I have uploaded it into my bucket into Northern Virginia. And now let me go back to my replicated data bucket, which is into London and refresh it. And in a minute or so, I should start seeing that object being displayed to me here. Right. It is asynchronous. Good way to see the thing happening here. It may take little time to get the object. And now this one is available here. Be mindful. We are paying for both the objects now. We also paid for the data transfer. So that will be added to your invoice. Be aware about what you are doing. Done. Replication can be done in this manner, uh, this manner and we have now replicated our data. If later you decide that I am no longer interested in replication, no problem at all. You could go ahead and configure your bucket rules to be removed or you could go ahead and say, hey, I want to delete this rule that is still possible or maybe I could disable rule also if it is a temporary thing I am doing. Now, few things we have to be little aware about how this replication work. I have already talked about. So this is my bucket here. Let's say one bucket here. 
bucket one i have configured its rule to copy data to bucket two so this is what is happening here what if if i configured one more rule into a opposite direction can i do that yes you can so i could have configured another rule also like this if i want to or i could have configured a rule like b1 to b3 first and then from b3 to b2 and from b2 to b1 would it not create a loop of data being copied here and there answer is no whatever rules you create those rules apply to the object who are native to the bucket so if i have 100 objects here and those 100 objects came because of replication from b2 the rule which i have created would not apply on these 100 but as soon as i go here and i say hey i have added a new object here that new object would get copied into b1 here because it is a native object of that bucket native is the not the right exact term but just to explain i am using the word native here so the rule would apply only to the object which are of b2 but not the object which got replicated from somewhere else so that will not create a loop for you shouldn't be a worry for you so hope this thing is also clear that was all about replication the last thing i want to discuss into this particular module is called transfer acceleration very simple setting but very effective if you have lot of data to transfer for from different locations or from very far location than the bucket let's see that let's consider the situation that i have my users who are somewhere here into tokyo and my bucket is here somewhere in ohio so if they are sending data my data would be replicated over internet there are multiple network involved and then it will reach to this location if i use something called transfer acceleration what i would get i would get a new endpoint detail so currently i am talking to a endpoint of northern virginia sorry ohio to communicate and send data but once i enable this feature called transfer acceleration i would get an endpoint who would be responded by the edge location of cloudfront so cloudfront edge location somewhere near tokyo would respond when this endpoint is called request will go to the endpoint it would go to the edge location and all these edge locations are connected over aws global network so my data would be traveling through this network now and will reach to my destination faster so that is called transfer acceleration where we are leveraging the global network of aws and edge location to transfer the data over a network which is optimized for data transfer maintained by AWS. So that feature is called transfer acceleration. And it's not very complicated setting. You just enable it and afterward you would give everyone the endpoint which has come because of that transfer acceleration setting. So I would go here and I would find setting here for my transfer acceleration it is disabled i would edit that and i would say i want to enable it and now i have a new acceleration endpoint whose name is giving me idea that this is a acceleration endpoint so my bucket dot s3 dash accelerate dot amazon aws dot com which i would refer for anyone who want to copy data to my bucket so that would ensure my data gets copied much much faster there is a charge associated with that so be aware on that here is a link you could see the pricing of what would be my charges on data transfer and you can further look for the transfer acceleration what would be the charge associated with it so just be aware that there may be some charges on this kind of acceleration so access point internet acceleration these prices would apply so i hope you have got a better idea of amazon s3 i would stop here and i'll speak to you into next chapter there we will discuss about another interesting storage service thank you